Hey brothers and sisters of Christ, thank you for joining me this evening or morning or whenever you choose to watch this. We're going to uh, be talking about more about discipleship making movements tonight and just go from there. So uh, let's go ahead and start in prayer and just go from there. So um, Father God, just thank you just for bringing us together on this platform. And Lord God, I, I just want to uh, pray that, that what I am sharing is your words and not my own. Father God, I pray that that if something comes out of my mouth and it is not of your of you or or uh, your words that others do not hear it but they only hear you father god i also want to take a moment and just uh lift everybody up that is watching this video and lord god you know what every single person's going through and i pray that that their lives just be brought to you and just every situation that they, they feel freely just to be able to give it to you and trust you with it. Father God, I, I thank you just for this opportunity and I love you. Amen. So last week we talked about silos. Silos are basically little communities. These little communities can turn into big communities and even bigger silos, but um, this week we're going to kind of go more in depth with this and just go from there. So, um, if a disciple making movement is really our goal, we first need to jump into a couple things here. Um, oftentimes when we talk about discipleship, we're talking about quite often we only focus on one person. And we forget what the main picture is here. So I really want to take a moment and just kind of pull up a couple things here. But just to try to help us switch our mindset from thinking about just one person to a whole disciple making movement. From extra uh, extrication in in the evangelism, it's a big word, I struggle with it, to more disciple-making thinking. So, I'm pulling some stuff up right now here, so give me just a second here. Let's look at that one. We're going to grab this one. Pull it over. Make it a little bigger for you guys. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Instead of thinking on focusing on just reaching that one person uh, at a time, we need to really be focusing on reaching on a whole family and then a community at a time. This is great if you're just focusing on one person but that's not going to make a discipleship make your movement you want this to, to be more um and we'll talk about that here in a little bit don't think of reaching one person as just the success but reach the whole family the community that is a success but don't just stop there. Extend it out to the nation, to the world. Also, um, something else is really focusing on the um, when you start thinking of just the new believers, broaden your whole um, focus to, to the whole Christian community. Engage discipleship with 
and within the families and communities. It may be uncomfortable at times, but just just keep doing it. Just have have faith that you'll get through this. Um, also, something else here you'll see at the bottom of your screen there is just to transfer. When we really are thinking, um, we need to to redeem the local culture, not just transfer the Christian culture to a new believer. Don't focus just on on the new believer. Focus on the bigger picture, the whole culture. Um, let's see here. We're gonna pull up a little more here in a second. Ooh, ooh. I'm working on it here. I'm a little slow with this thing. I desperately need just somebody to to jump on and and help me with this sometimes. So uh, da, da, da. it's almost ready. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, also, we need to, as you see here, um, view viewed by outsiders as something new, but not destructive. So often, I see this on the small mission groups, especially when it's just like one or two people. People will come into a community and they think that their ways from back home is how the local community is going to do it, and it's not. You want to help without hurting. So what you really need to focus on is just be like, all right, let one of the locals be the leader and just you walk beside them. How do they do this? And then show your faith through your daily living while you're with them. This will build relationships. And this, when you are focusing on the extra action evangelism, sometimes you're viewed by outsiders as destructive to a community. Don't be destructive. Take time and actually just dive into their local community and learn about them. We need to result in, this is sad that we have to say this, but we want to, we want the results to be the, the normal level of persecution in the restricted area countries. We do not want people to die because we're sharing the word with them. We want people to realize that it's safe. It's a safe haven. Um, and it can be difficult in some of the different countries. So we need to take a moment and just, just figure out how to do that. And that can be difficult when we're really taking time and just trying to find the best way to keep the levels normal, if not better. Um, we want a joyful process. When a family discovers Christ together, we want to celebrate that. We, we want to be joyful, but we don't want it to be painful that a family member really is leaving one community for another. It's not a loss. It's just a new beginning. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. Changing one thing real quick. All right. Bear with me here. Finally, we want to encourage believers to live like Christ within their existing community and share the gospel as part of their daily life. And we don't, we don't want it to be that people are going back to their old communities to find people to bring to a new community. That's not the picture we want here. We want those old, old communities to really develop into something better and bigger and, and just to see Christ the way that, that Christ 
wants to be seen. Just to think about this, I forgot to really uh, quote where I'm getting this information from, so I'm going to throw that up here right now. Um, this, this is from the book Contagious Disciple Making. Um, the book looks like this. It's from David Watson and Paul Watson. I highly, highly encourage for you to get this book. It's a really great read and um, very, very knowledgeable individuals here that... Um, that this book's all about discipleship, leading others to the journey of discovery. And I just really, really enjoyed this, this uh, book. All right. So you're getting ready to see the ugly mug in three, two, one. All right. So we can't just focus on one person. Like, like we just we just shared um, a person that you're really meeting with we need to use them as the gateway to a family encourage for the for them to, to just get their family involved also another thing is that this individual may be the seed that plants more seeds in their community so let that be that this could become eventually the church uh, matthew 28 19 through 20 reads therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit and teaching and teaching them to obey everything that i have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We are commanded to go. We are commanded to go and make disciples. So what's holding you back? You see, disciple makers seek the lost. Not just one person. But all of the lost. It's not a one and done thing. It's truly a lifestyle. I can't stress this enough. If a, if a pastor stops preaching and only focuses on just the one person, you may have a person that really just needs to hear God and see God and they're coming into your church, but you're focused on that that little sin. Don't just focus on the little things, but focus on the bigger picture. We, we can't really... This is difficult for me, but sometimes we need to keep in mind that numbers is not the our goal here. You heard me. Numbers is not the goal. It's getting people saved and to see Christ in a new way. To see life in a new way. I have struggled with this and I didn't know exactly how to really put this in here. So, just please bear with me on this. This is a big thing. When we are having discipleship making movements and disciple making movements, it's not about us. You'll see quickly that you may start with one person, but then you will get with meet with somebody else and then then that person starts meeting with people and then that person that they're meeting with and the person that you are meeting with is also meeting with new believers and eventually there there's so much going on but you got to keep in mind that it's not about you it's not about you
eventually these groups that you're meeting with may turn into something so big. But that's not the goal. You heard me. That's not the goal. When you are getting to the point where it's just not you and this other person, but you're really getting a small group, find your leader. Who is actually living this out? Pray about it. Don't forget to pray about it. Let others take lead. Disciple makers cannot base their success on the numbers. Don't lose focus on the big picture here. Let the Lord really be the guide of your group. Bottom line is we need to focus on God and stay focused on Him every day. Don't forget that. Also, remember to change how you're thinking. Brings it back to the chart. Go back in the video and, and, and really take note of that chart. It can also be found in the book. And I highly encourage for you to check out the book. I'm going to throw the cover back up right now for you to take note of here it is I highly encourage for you to get this book but don't forget that you need to also read this other book this book right here this is the book this is God's word When you're meeting with disciples, if your whole conversation and your whole words is not based on this book, you're not sharing God, you're sharing yourself. Focus your conversation on this. Live life to its fullest. As I wrap up, I just want to want to share that this has been a very stressful week for me. And that is why this video got delayed. I'm sorry, but it was inventory at work and I put in way longer hours than I really expected to. I don't anticipate for this to happen but it just did and I couldn't give you God it was gonna be me I didn't want that so I, I chose to put the video off a couple more days and really pray about it before I I posted so uh, we're going to go ahead and close out in prayer and then I'm going to share a couple little things here. Just go from there. So, if you would join me in prayer. Father God, I just uh, come to you this evening and just thank you just for for what uh, you, you allowed me to share um, and what you shared really through me. And Lord God, I, I pray that, that what I am, what I just shared, it, it brings honor and glory to you, and if it doesn't, please, Lord, just make it a way that, that the others don't hear it, but they truly hear you. Father God, I pray that that if if something is said, that, that I am made aware of it. Father God, I, I want to take a moment and just pray for everybody watching this, um, whenever it is, Lord God. I pray that hearts, minds, and souls just be brought to you, and that... Um, that if today is their day of salvation, that we, we can truthfully dig deeper into this and that they get involved into a church and into a community and in a, in a family of believers. 
I know that right now with, with everything going on, it's super difficult for some individuals just to get out. And Lord God, I pray that, that for those individuals that, that they, they just reach out to a, a local church. And Father God, I pray that what is um, truthfully shared um, at this church really, really, it, it, if I don't let me just be their church you are the church and oh god i pray that that what is shared from me helps feed their souls because it's your words and not mine but don't let this be the only church that they have father, father god i pray for christian fellowship and lord god that that old communities become new communities but but because of something different it's called jesus and lord god i pray that that communities just be open to see this and lord god i pray that that you just use us as vessels just to be um just sharing the word with others well god i thank you just for this opportunity and and lord god i love you Lord, keep me focused on what is really important, and that is you. Father, I thank you. This is in your son's name I pray. Amen. Alright. So, like I said, I've got some content that I will be sharing. Um... YWAM Orlando is coming up super quick. Um, I will have another video posted soon about it, but it's just going to talk about ways that you could help me, help me to further my education on discipleship and just to help me get to where I feel led and where I feel called. So, um, I need to pretty much raise almost nine thousand dollars that's the goal so please just keep an eye out for the video and um, I'll be posting that probably tomorrow the um, dates for that is super quick honestly uh, the dates are from April 5th to August 27th I know initially I shared um, it was six months I believe it's actually closer to five months um, when you look up on the YWAM Orlando site sometimes it, it says six then says five so I'm not exactly quite sure yet about that but um, I will try as much as possible to share share what I can while I'm there but realize that I don't want to take from the experience so when you guys feel led, you are called to go. So I pray that that uh, if this is what you feel that you want to do, go and do it. Um, this is a great opportunity to just do what you need to. So um, also just a quick shout out to Brotherhood of Fellowship. It's a group where men can truly be men. If you want to be a part of Brotherhood of Fellowship, please reach out to me or my brother in Christ, Christopher Collins. I pray that, that you pray about it, but this is for men only, where we can just be men and just share what is going on in our lives. Also, just for you guys to know, Brotherhood of Fellowship Motorcycle Ministries it is really starting to take off, and as a motorcycle uh, group, it is a it is a family. I, I asked several of my friends that ride motorcycles, and they'll tell you it is a family. So, for some reason, just getting behind the the bars, the handlebars on a motorcycle, just really is is just one of those things that just brings people together and. You watch out for each other. 
like the law enforcement says they got your that they are watching each other's sixes a, a, another buddy from brotherhood of fellowship shared that he's got my seven god has your seven g y seven i really really uh hope that uh that you really take that to heart. God's got you. God's watching over you. Trust him. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close out the, this video. It's been way longer than I anticipated. So, uh, just take a moment and just, just pray this week uh, for me. I will be uh, hopefully sharing probably tomorrow a video of more information about YWAM. It's a lot about finances because that's where my focus is right now. By the end of March, I have to have quite a bit turned in. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. And it's a lot of faith. So, just please um, take time and just really be praying for me about it um so i will chat with you guys later and remember that i'm going to share just something else real quick for the word of god is alive and powerful it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between souls and spirit between joint and marrow it exposes our in innermost thoughts and desires don't forget that this week. The word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. Let's live out Hebrews 4.12 as we go through our week and through our life. And just really to stay focused. So you guys have a good rest of your, your evening or morning or whenever you're watching this. And, st and remember, stay focused, stay positive, and know God, love God. And truthfully live God every single day. You guys have a good rest of your, your evening and stay focused.